It's going to show you how to start your flat vector portrait. And this is one that I'm still in the process of creating. Obviously, this is not a self-portrait, but I found this beautiful image and I just wanted to show you as an example. I am going to show you how to um, get started and I'm going to start with a photo of my daughter. Um, you will be doing a self-portrait, so you'll be using a picture of yourself. So in Illustrator, make sure you are in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to go to File, Open, and we're going to open up the image of yourself. So you're going to have to um, get the image of yourself probably from your phone and um, put it onto your computer, like your drive or something. And this is a photo of my daughter eating pizza. Um, and I want to recreate this. I think I'm going to leave out the pizza, but I just really liked her smile in this one. So um, we're going to do a little avatar, a flat vector avatar of her. And first things first, we need to kind of pull the colors from the palette that she's wearing. Now I'm going to simplify this. I'm not going to do like every little flower on her shirt, obviously. I'm not going to do every little hair or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to simplify this by just kind of choosing the main colors. So the colors like yellow and then the color of her skin tone, the color of her lips and her, you know, maybe her, her nose and her hair. So we're going to start with the shape tool. So the rectangle tool, I'm just going to create a simple box off to the side here. And then we're going to find our eyedropper. And if you can't find your eyedropper, you can click on the three dots here. And then you'll just click and drag that over. Mine's already there, but you can click and drag it into your toolbar and it'll be there. Now with the eyedropper tool, what you're going to do is you're going to choose the color. So I'll just choose kind of her main skin tone, just the skin tone that I noticed the most. That's her main skin tone. And we'll just leave the box as is. So now I can do control C, control V on the box. We'll move that over. And we're going to do the next color. So the next color I might do like kind of a little bit of that darker shadow area in her skin tone. So it's a little darker. You can see it just went ahead and added it. So as long as it's selected, it will add that color. We'll go back to my selection tool, do control C, control V. We'll go to the next color. Next one, let's do the color of her hair. So it's kind of this yellowy golden color. I want it to be light enough like right about there okay selection tool control c control v now you'll notice when you start doing like eyes and things too you'll start seeing colors that you maybe weren't expecting and that's okay we're just pulling colors straight from the image let's go in and we'll do her lips here i'll do two colors upper lip and lower lip so that'll be lower lip and then we'll do upper lip so these are like our swatches and this will really be helpful when we're trying to pull colors. Upper lip is just a little darker, I think. Yeah. All right. And then we'll do her shirt. We can always add swatches too. So if we start running out or we need to add a color, we certainly can. So grab the shirt color. And I think that's pretty good. We need her eyes too. I forgot about that. So let's zoom in a little bit here. <laughs> messy face. So we're going to grab her eye color here. And I probably should have done, we'll just, it's almost black because we're so zoomed in. And I think I accidentally changed that one black from yellow. So that's okay. All right. We'll just call that our eye color. And then we'll do the selection tool again, control C, control V. And we'll do this one with the yellow. Like I said, we can always add colors later. Okay. That's pretty good. So now when we get started, we're going to use the pen tool to probably start with just like the face or the, the head shape. So I have my pen tool here. We're gonna go to our layers panel and I'm gonna click on new layer, create new layer. And you can keep this layer on, that's fine. You can also lock that layer if you just wanna keep it in place. And now we're just gonna do the face. Now, right now I have yellow selected. So let's choose the color of her skin tone, which is that color there. And now I'm gonna go in and use my pen tool. So a reminder that you just click to make a straight line you click and hold to do a curve. Oops, I made that one a little too severe. Let's modify that. There we go. So I'm just gonna kind of follow along her face shape. I'm gonna even go past her bangs here simply because I'll cover that part up with her hair. So it might look kind of silly right now, but I promise that it'll look much better as we go along. Okay, so there is her face. It's a good idea to label these. So I'll double click on the layer name. We'll just call this face. And I'm gonna turn that layer off. Um, next one, let's do her hair. So we're gonna do a new layer. You can call this hair. We're gonna draw on this layer. Okay, 
let's grab the color I need, which is this color. And then we're going to just basically trace her whole hair here. Okay. And we're not too worried about making it perfect. So you're not necessarily doing like every single strand of hair. We're just kind of getting a close approximation here. I might get to that point here where, whoops, it might be covering up so we can kind of play around with the opacity here. All right. And this is where you have to be a little careful because we want to make sure that we're not whoops crossing over here if i just lowered that opacity i might bring that opacity back up a little bit here there we go that does not look like hair so we're going to go back okay i'm going to just do a little more here so this is where you can kind of have some creative freedom too if you want to mess around a little bit with you know your hair color makeup color anything like that we're going to simplify a little bit here so it's okay to take some what we call artistic liberties and that's where you're just going to be deciding you know what you're going to include and what you're not going to include now my daughter has really curly hair so i'm going to try and show that in just a couple little ringlets here or curls She's got really curly hair at the back, and then the rest of it's just kind of wavy or straight. This comes out at the side. Don't forget, you can also use um, the curvature pen tool if you would like to use that. You certainly can. Almost done with the hair here. So now we can put it together in our layers. We're going to take a look and see how it looks all together. I'm going to raise up go to my properties again we're going to raise the opacity up on all of that again that looks pretty good that's not too bad it's a good start now sometimes we end up with gaps in between our layers and generally that's why i start with the face and kind of work my way up so i start with the big areas first then i move to the smaller areas because those bigger areas are going to cover up some of those things but if you have a gap like in here there's a teeny tiny gap i can see you move over here and i'll show you what i'm talking about here like right there, I can see the photo behind it. So I'm gonna grab that direct selection tool and that's where I'm gonna make that adjustment and just move it over a little bit. I have a gap right here too, so same thing. Move that one over. Little artistic adjustments. There's nothing wrong with that. If we need to mess around with the shape of the curls or anything, I can do that too. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out. Pretty good. Now is a good time to save. We're gonna say file, save as save on your computer. We're going to save it as an AI file. I'm just going to call it Indy because that's my daughter's name. Click OK. And now we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> All right. So we're going to turn the hair layer off and the face layer. And now maybe I'll do, let's do like the neck part. So neck layer. And you're just going to keep doing this piece by piece. Eventually, it'll start looking more and more like yourself. Grab my pen tool here, and we're going to kind of go down. And I'm going to kind of just follow the curve of her dress. The dress is going to go a little bit over this layer, so I'm not too worried about it. Same with the hair, too. We can kind of reorganize the layers. This one I might have to adjust. We'll go to properties again and lower that opacity so we can see the chin. Go back here. There we are. Okay. Raise that opacity back up. Now I'm going to pull up my layers again. Let's see how this looks. So there's some gaps there. It's also overlapping the face. So I'm going to drag this down. I also need to change the color of this. So let's go in to my eyedropper. We'll scooch on over. I had this darker skin tone, I think, that I was going to use for that. Yep. Oh, it looks kind of weird right now, but that's okay. We'll adjust some of those points. It is below the hair. We need to make it below the face, too. There we go. So now the hair is covering up that area. And we can adjust that. I'm going to make this go a little higher up. Oops. And again, it's okay if it kind of goes past make this one double click we're going to make it go much higher up 
just until it goes over the face. This is the hardest part of the assignment, I think. All right, now I'll do the dress. So next one, we're gonna grab the eyedropper tool. Grab that, here we go. Turn off those layers and then I'm just gonna follow, we'll do a new layer, otherwise it's not gonna let you actually draw on there. I'll call it dress. And we're gonna click along here, whoops. It has the yellow, I think, selected right now, which is good. Now I'll just follow along and I'm just gonna do like a basic outline of the dress. I'm not gonna worry too much. I might even like only do the top part here. Yeah, something like that is good. I'm not gonna worry about making it look super realistic. I mean, you certainly can, but you don't need to spend too much time on like patterns and things like that. I know I have to adjust that a little bit. So we're gonna pull that down, that anchor over a little bit just to smooth it out. That looks better. Piece it all together. All right, let's zoom out and take a look. And it's really good to zoom in and out as you're working to make sure everything looks good. So I can tell like the hair is kind of being overlapped by the dress. So I need to move this dress below the hair. The dress should be on top of the neck though. So that looks good. That's just the shadow there. I could go in and add like the lines of the arms, but for now I think this is fine. Eventually we're gonna delete this uh, background. I may mess around with the color of the neck, but for now I think we're good. So we'll say file save. And now I might move on you know, to the eyes or the nose or the mouth. Um, a good rule of thumb for mouths are if you, even if you have an open mouth, um, if it's a closed mouth too, you will generally do two colors. So uh, the bottom lip color and a top lip color. Oftentimes the top lip will be darker than the bottom lip. So just a heads up about that. Also something to keep in mind as you're working, if you are doing eyes, don't forget that there are generally gonna be four parts to an eye. So the shape of the white of the eye, so the white, there's a pupil in there, which is the black part, the iris, which is the color part, and then the highlight, which is the white part. And then of course, you'll generally have some lines and things going around the eyes as well. Also something to keep in mind, you can't just do one eye on one side and then flip it and do the same on the other. That's gonna make your portrait look really robotic and fake. You wanna make sure that you're doing different uh, traces because you can see this eye is a little bit more open than this one. And that's what makes her look human and natural um, and not super robotic. So avoid just copying things. Like it might be tempting to copy a pupil on one side to put it on the other, but that's not gonna help you in this uh, assignment. So take it piece by piece, layer by layer, and eventually you'll start getting something that hopefully will look more like yourself and um, that you'll enjoy using in the future.